Jail Yaffe is the president of Kit Care Corporation in Toronto. He spoke with us about the essential items for every workplace first aid kit. Let's take a look what is in a typical first aid kit and what is required in a typical first aid kit. First of all, when administrating a first aid, um, it is extremely important that you wear gloves, okay? Because you can come in contact with someone else's blood. Now, that's dangerous. Coming in contact with your own blood is not a problem. So the first thing we do is we've got a small cut, and this kit is designed, of course, for small cuts, large cuts, um, and wounds, and um, a variety of, of issues that may come up in first aid. So you've got here a single dose application where you simply wipe the um, surface and clean the surface, and hopefully that will dry fairly quickly, and of course the most common um, item today in a first aid kit or in a first aid injury is band-aids. And uh, these are fabric uh, band-aids um, that are impervious to water, dirt, grease, and oil. In addition to that, if it's a larger wound, we end up with gauze bandage. And we have a whole variety of sizes of gauze bandage. And uh, here is a gauze bandage that is a small roll of gauze bandage. And we simply open it up and that's for a larger wound. Again, the wound is cleaned and the gauze bandage uh, will go on uh, and cover that wound and absorb any uh, blood and body fluids, etc., cetera, that uh, would come in contact with the wound. This quality gauze bandage is, is um, a bandage that clings to itself and may not need adhesive tape to close it. So you've got that um, being a very protective area. The most important bandage in the first aid kit is a pressure dressing or compress bandage. And many of you uh, may not be familiar with this, but I consider this to be the most important bandage in a first aid kit. Uh, all of these products are sealed. All of them, as I, as I mentioned, um, are hypoallergenic, latex-free, and water-soluble. And that here is a pressure dressing, so now you've got a severe uh, cut, say, to the wrist. You would put this on. You would then wrap it around and apply pressure uh, to that. And it doesn't matter how many times you wrap it around. You apply pressure, and you've got that bandage in place. Uh, gauze pads are quite often used on larger wounds, and they're just simply um, taken out of the box. Again, uh, they're all individually wrapped and sterile and um, you just simply open them up and a lot of people spend time looking for the opening and if you notice I didn't do anything like that and you put a gauze pad on or a series of gauze pads on it might be uh, for burns it might be to protect the wound and you may want to put gauze or tape over that. Uh, the first aid kits all contain uh, tapes of different widths and sizes. Again, these are latex free, so people with very sensitive skin, um, and they are hypoallergenic as well. So that's your typical adhesive tape that may go over a bandage and secure it in place for a, uh, for a period of time until um, uh, emergency help arrives or until additional medical uh, treatment is required. First aid creams, as I mentioned, um, are in the first aid kit. These are general antiseptic first aid creams, and they're all in little packages, so there's no chance of cross-contamination. The same thing with headache tablets, if you allow them in your first aid kits. Again, they're all individually pillow-packed um, items. The other items in the first aid kits are splints. For many of you who've taken a first aid course, you know the significance of a triangular bandage or an arm sling. Uh, biohazard bags are found in the kit, and these are little individual bags that um, if you have dirty or soiled bandages or gloves, etc., at the end of uh, the process, you can take that and put that into a biohazard bag and dispose of that. 